Thank you very much, Dirk. Um, that's a thrilling task, admittedly. Um, to start off with, I, I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about um, how the Growth Research Program fits in with um, ESRC's research strategy on international development and economic growth. And as many of you may know, some others might not, the ESRC is one of the seven research councils within the UK, and we have an annual budget of around 200 million pounds. And um, we spend that on, um, so we are the UK's largest funding organization uh, for research on economic and, and social issues. And we cover a whole range of basic and applied research across um, uh, all sorts of disciplines. And um, one of our key strategic priority areas is economic performance and sustainable growth. And um, the, the questions we ask in, um, as part of this uh, strategy include um, what actually leads to economic performance and leads to sustainable growth and how can we ensure that uh, populations benefit from this and how do we make econo uh, economies stable and, and resilient and the the SSC has in, in the UK has a number of, of larger investments around economic growth and macroeconomics and finance and business and we're also very keen to close gaps in our portfolio in areas such as green economy, uh, future cities, which would include issues like urbanization, and um, uh, cities as, as engines for future growth, and uh, also social innovation. And in addition to our investments in, in high-income countries, we also have a specific interest in international development research. And um, here I, I list four of our key research uh, programs, um, including a larger program we have um, in partnership with David on poverty alleviation. And um, this, this program has various streams, is um, much broader in, in remit uh, than, than this current call here. And um, this has been going on since 2005. And our partnership with David over the years has been very fruitful. And w with this um, program here, we are very keen to, to build on this, on this fairly strong partnership. And if you're interested in any of, um, of these uh, other schemes, do get in touch with me or any of my colleagues and we can discuss this outside of this session. Um, so I've given you a bit of an idea of how this all fits in with the ESRC strategy. And in the second part of my presentation, I would like to take you um, through this call in, in more detail. But in the interest of time and your sanity, it's not going to be a comprehensive step-by-step <laughs> -step guide. <laughs> so uh, my, my colleagues, Mary and Lindy, who are here in the audience, um, have uh, worked really very hard to pull together a number of very useful documents, mm -hmm. most importantly, a set of guidelines um, and um, FAQs. Um, so you, f you can find all these online. It's, it's a huge uh, amount of work that went into this. Um, so some of these are listed here. Uh, the main gateway to, to everything as far as this call is concerned is uh, the call website. You can uh, get access to this um, presentation online as well, and I've, I've tried to hyperlink everything I, I talk about, so you can just click on that and it will take you to the relevant documents. So the main, the core documents you need to look at are the guidance notes for applicants and the FAQs, and also the core specification we've heard uh, a lot about um, before. So. The DFID and the SRC teams together uh, with the directorate at the ODI have um, developed um, these specifications and uh, a lot more detail on the three um, thematic areas is given in these um, specifications. So this is quite a chunk uh, of work as well. Um, do get very familiar with this before you submit an application. Um, what else do we have on here? Yeah, the impact toolkit, that relates to um, pathways to impact that Maureen uh, showed, showed you earlier on. Also very important to, to look at that. Um, and then of course there's the directorate that can, can um, give you more information on, on some of these aspects. And um, uh, what's happening here? I can't seem to. You want me to press the button? Ooh. There we are. What do we actually expect to fund in this call? And um, <laughs> As my colleagues from DFID and ODI um, have explained in much more detail, our expectation, expectations uh, in terms of this, this call for proposals is really to fund high quality research on issues relating to economic growth in low income countries. And this research also has to have the potential to have impact on policy and practice. But project 
in addition to this expectation, um, we obviously have a few sort of eligibility criteria and uh, more specific um, expectations. And one of them is that um, projects need to have a value of at least 100,000 pounds at full economic cost. And um, they can be uh, for up to three years. And um, if we assumed an average of 370,000 pounds per project, um, the current budget for this call would um, uh, make it possible to fund between 25 and 30 um, projects um, in, this, in this round. And this average is based on our experience with the previous call. And I would urge you to um, go online and, and look at what we funded in the previous round. That gives you an idea of the, the size and scope of these projects. Um, in terms of uh, more specific requirements um, that need to be addressed in this call, uh, that, that you, your proposals need to fulfill in order to, to get to the next round, of course, you need to address one or more of the three focus areas we've heard a lot about um, earlier. And in, in addition to that, um, your proposal also needs to be aligned with the scope of the project. And um, what we mean by that is also explained in very much detail in the specifications. And these specifications lay, uh, lay out our expectations around um, issues, uh, for example, um, like gender and data disaggregation, capacity development, open access, and also themes that actually cut across these three thematic areas, including uh, strengthened governance in fragile states and conflict-afflicted states, and also structural inequalities, as well as, as climate change. And these specifications also, I don't know if you can still see that, uh, they, they do talk about the strong geographical focus of this program on low-income countries. So this is also something you re really need to get familiar with if you want to apply uh, use, uh, through this call. And finally, in this program, research you propose must be social sciences. And if you're in doubt about any of these requirements, um, do read the, the online documentation, but also get in touch. We have um, a large team that can, can help you with these issues at the ESRC. So all, all of these requests, I, I would suggest you channel primarily through the ESRC, and then we will uh, speak to our colleagues at the directorate and the DFI to, to sort out specific questions if, if we are in doubt. In terms of the timeline, which I think will be very important for all of you, um, we are running this call as a two-stage uh, process, starting with a round of outline applications. And these outline proposals um, will first be sifted through by the office in terms of um, eligibility criteria. And then they're all peer-reviewed uh, by a panel of external um, assessors. And um, the assessment panel will then shortlist up to 45, that's a ballpark figure, um, of, of outline proposals, and depending on the quality of the proposals. And um, applicants will then, successful applicants will then be invited to, to submit a full application by the 18th of October this year. And um, this is only by, by invitation only. Full applications are by invitation only. So if your outline proposal was not shortlisted, um, uh, we can't accept your full proposals. Um, and, and full applications are then, then undergo a full uh, peer review process, and US applicants get the opportunity to respond to uh, the reviewers' comments, and this is then all taken into consideration by a commissioning panel. And this panel consists of um, academic experts, but also potential research users. And they will convene and make a final funding decisions, uh, de decision, and this will then communicate it to successful applicants in March next year. And keep in mind now that the earliest start date for, for successful projects is the 1st of June next year. We cannot, uh, because this is quite a lengthy process, um, start um, or send out any award any, any earlier than that point. Um, in terms of the assessment criteria these uh, panels, these various panels will look at, um, obviously we want to fund the highest quality research and um, we've talked about that uh, before, what, what that would entail. Um, there are, of course, a few specific criteria assessors look for. And um, this is all, again, explained in the documentation in very much detail. Um, the assessors will, of course, uh, consider factors such as, uh, is this research intellectually innovative? Is it well-focused? 
Does it methodologically sound? Um, what does your, your track record look like? But they will also scrutinize issues um, or areas such as uh, what are your project management plans like? Um, are there, well, what, what does your capacity, well, if you have capacity strengthening elements in your proposal, what does it look like? Does it fit? Does it make sense? Uh, why, why do you not have any capacity in uh, building elements in your proposal? And also very importantly, um, what are your research impact plans? And um, are the partnerships and collaborations you propose, are they, are they appropriate for, for what you're intending to do? And, and finally, uh, because we're accountable to the taxpayer, uh, value for money is going to be a big consideration. Um, then in terms of just pure eligibility to, uh, to apply as, an, um, <coughs> as a host organization, so an organization which can administer the grant, um, for the purpose of, of this program, we allow researchers um, from not-for-profit uh, research organizations from across the world. So it's definitely not, not only in the UK. So we expect to see um, applications from all, all over the world. And uh, principal investigators um, um, have to make sure that their, their proposed host organization has sufficient And do get in touch earlier rather than later if you're in doubt whether your organization um, does, does meet these criteria. Speak to the office and we will try to talk you through this and ultimately we will have to discuss that on a case-by-case -case basis so we can't give you any generalized advice on that at this stage. Um, also, this is um, a bit of formality, make sure that all princ the principal investigator and all co-investigators and their institutions are registered with our joint um, electronic submission system called JEZ. Uh, this is how, where you channel your application through. There are three pathways to do that. It's all explained in the online uh, documentation. If you have any um, questions, get in touch with the ESRC. Um, this uh, JEZ system, um, is basically an online form you need to fill in, and it will ask the obvious details, including um, the, your research organization uh, involved, or any, all the research organizations involved, the names of the principal applicant, and uh, the co-investigators, and the project partners, and so forth. And there will also be a section on an indicative budget. So fairly high level, um, we, I don't think, expect at this stage to have every single detail to, to um, a high, high degree of precision. Um, but I think it is important to give us a, a good idea of what kind of things you want to spend your money on. And um, this online form also has a section on, on impact. And you do need to take this section seriously because this is a big part um, of what the assessors will look for. And in this, this section, you will outline uh, the potential impacts your research may have. And we also want to see a brief summary of um, what the intended out outcomes of your research will be both academically and also in terms of um, uh, potential users of your research. And the ESRC Impact Toolkit I mentioned earlier will help you um, develop um, your, your impact plan and it will help you ask or answer questions um, such as who will benefit from your research, how will they benefit from this research, and what can be done to ensure that there's opportunity to benefit from this research. And in addition to this, um, this online form, there are also three um, attachments that you need to, to upload before you submit your outline proposal. And these include the very heart of your proposal. And this is the case for support, which I'll talk about in a second. And also attach um, a brief uh, justification of uh, the budget request. I'm going to talk about that in a sec. And uh, CVs of all named researchers. This uh, case for, oops, the case for support um, as I said, it's the core of your proposal and it will have to include aims, and, aim, aims at, and objectives, background of your research, spell out exactly what your research questions will be and their relevance to the three themes. And it will also describe a bit of your methodology or the met me methods you're intending to use and your <coughs> analysis plans. And this is, of course, a lot of material, but please be aware that we only have um, capacity to look at two sides of A4. If uh, any, any proposal that is longer, in terms of the case of support, we cannot consider, unfortunately. And um, 
Finally, the justification of resources. Um, as I said, this is, we are only looking for an indicative budget at this stage. Um, but for the assessors, it will be very important to, to get a good idea of um, what kind of research resources you are requesting and why you're requesting them. And only at the full application stage will um, we expect a very, very detailed budget. And there will be um, plenty of, of guidelines on, on that later on. Finally, the submission deadline. Um, it's the 25th of April at four o'clock UK time. We cannot accept any applications after that point. And if, if your institution is um, one that is not self-registered, what that means becomes very obvious when you read the, the online um, documents, um, then presumably your application goes through a <coughs> submitter pool and this takes a while. So make sure that you submit your proposal in good time to your submitter pool so that they have enough time to prepare the documents to send them to us. So the deadline is the JES deadline, not the deadline when you sub send your stuff to your research office. And with that, I'm finished <laughs> and give you these um, email addresses and, and phone numbers and please get in touch. There's nothing worse uh, than uh, contacting us a minute before the, you need to submit this call. <laughs> There's plenty of time to, to sort out the sort of administrative details in advance. Your first port of call needs to be the uh, DGP secretariat at the SSC, um, and we have plenty of people checking this email inbox. And then we also have Lisa Sayers and Mary Day, who is here, um, who are primary uh, contacts um, for the scheme within the SSC. And if you have problems filling in the form, there's a jazz helpline as well. And I put my name on there, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to help you with the, the actual uh, application process. But I was quite op optimistic when I put my name on there. Um, thank you very much.